This is Karen Johnson with the Proctor's Hist Oral History Project and today is August 19th, 2013 and we're very pleased today to have with us Marilyn Canal, who was a very important person in the development of Proctor's because you were the president of the Arts Council and the That's Arts correct. Council were really the leaders yes. of who wanted to save Proctor's. Yes. So what do you remember about that? Well, I remember specifically the reason why we did this is because the Palace Theater had been torn down and uh, the Erie Theater didn't seem to be doing too well. And so that left the one performing arts theater, Proctor's. And um, it just seemed like maybe that was the next thing going to be gobbled up. There were talks of the building being torn down. And I think they're not just myself, but a lot of people in Schenectady were horrified about that because then we would be left with uh, Erie Theater, which was in really old repair. It needed a lot of work done to it, as well as Proctor's did, but Proctor's was better. And it held more people, I believe, also. So that's what we did. We uh, uh, got together a group of people and um, brought it to the attention of the, Ameri of the Schenectady people. And uh, so they went to town. And everything came from there. That's right. So when you were, um, you were involved in the arts in Schenectady. Yes. In what way? Well, first. Or ways. <laughs> okay, first of all, um, I, I believe I became interested in the arts because my daughter was a dancer. But then I became interested in the arts as far as, far as not being a performing artist, but someone who, in the background, carrying on uh, performances and so forth. And uh, so I just, I, performing arts was an important part of my life. I thought that Schenectady needed as much as we could do. And so I did my little part, that's all. So do you have memories of Proctor's before? Yes. Oh, before all this happened? Yeah. And what? Well, the seats were broken. That's what I remember mostly. <laughs> Do you remember what kind of shows there were? Or? Um, no, I just remember the show that came after Proctor's was taken over, and that was the black musician. Uh, Blackstone. Blackstone. And I believe he was the first performing arts person there after it was taken over by Axe. Right? Yes. Okay. And then from there on, um, I remember um, Dan... Um, the one in uh, the man manager of Proctor's. Dennis Madden? Uh, Dennis Madden, yes. And uh, all that he did, he did a lot, worked hard, was there 24 hours a day, I swear, and uh, helped to bring Proctor's back to the performing arts theater that it is now. So um, I have to give him a lot of credit for that. So the, the Arts Council was trying to help this new corporation get started. And you did some fundraising for oh, that. Oh, yes. We did the so. one where um, all of Proctor's Arcade was uh, open to all sorts of things. And then the theater was open the whole time for um, any performing arts that wanted to take place free. And they could use the. And so the whole day was filled up with uh, performing arts organizations, all organizations in Schenectady, not professionals. And uh, so, so this was like a test to yes. see whether people wanted to use yes. it. Yes, and they were really, I mean, the arcade was uh, packed with people. The theater was pretty well taken, uh, filled as well, which showed that the people were really interested in saving the performing arts theater. And how long was the show? All day long. It went on all day long. You could go and come. You didn't have to, and nobody paid. It was free. So they just went in and sat down and watched one performing arts like, um, you know, I'm having trouble remembering them now, but... Um, <sighs> Just one organization yeah. after another. Yes, all nonprofit okay. organizations, and, not professional. And did you make money by selling food and things in the arcade? Uh, good question. I think, I think they did. And did, did the Arts Council have the fundraisers that had the king and the Oh, yes. I forget the name. I've forgotten of about that, yes. But those were the Arts Council yes. helping. Yes, exactly. And uh, I don't know where that went. That kind of went by the wayside, really. But um, the one king I remember is the 
Maybe you can help me. Marvin Friedman? No, although he was one, and I knew him. And Marvin did a lot for the arts. And I think that's why he was king, because he opened his restaurant after every performance and did everything he could to consolidate and, and keep the arts going in Schenectady. I really think he did a lot for Schenectady. He and, did. But he's not the man I'm thinking okay. of. Okay. <laughs> oh, well, can't. maybe it'll come to yeah. us as we talk. But the, the idea of those were big, fancy parties. Oh, they were, and packed with people. After the performance at Proctor's, then they would all go over to Marvin's. I mean, it was very smart of him because the place was really packed with people, and I don't know how long that went on, really. But the Arts Council was definitely um, an impetus because yes. of everyone coming together and feeling like we could use Proctor's. Yes, we're going to save Proctor's. We're going to use it. It's the thing for Schenectady. And it took over, thank goodness. You know, one of the things that's always intrigued me about Proctor's is that when the effort was made to save it, there wasn't just one leader. That's right. There were everybody. All of there a sudden, were. there was this group of people they all came up with the same idea or they had been kicking it around or when somebody brought the idea up everybody said yes let's do that so it was interesting how it came from all walks of life really there was some kind of a committee formed yes acts and but even an exploratory committee before to see what was the level of interest I don't remember that Karen okay I don't know could be and then Axe was formed in 79, okay. 77. All right. And the theater was then owned by the city. Yes. And so the thing was that um, you had Axe kind of doing some planning and the Arts Council doing some planning. And then in uh, 79, they took over the theater from right. the city. And Must then have been scary. <laughs> it was. It was. You hoped that it would, you know, succeed. When did Dennis take over? Dennis came a couple years later. Okay, but he really worked very hard at uh, trying to keep the theater going also. Well, he was a volunteer first, and then he was paid. Yes, yes, yes. But he was very energetic. We had the pleasure of interviewing him, and he has wonderful, and he has a wonderful memory of all these things. Isn't that great? I'm glad you interviewed him because he could fill in a lot of spaces. So were you involved in the show called Artist Come Home at all? Yes. Uh, uh, that was the Schenectady Arts Council project. And for the first year it was very successful. And it was, uh, as I said, a, a one performance after another on the stage of Proctor's Theater. Okay. And, the, and, and the fee was free. I mean, you could come and go. But we, I think what Schenectady Arts Council wanted was to get Schenectady to realize that we have this wonderful performing arts theater at our disposal. And um, I think it did do the job. I, a lot of people came down to that. And in those early days, was the condition of the theater still a little rough? Oh yes, the seats were broken, like you'd sit down and there'd be a big vacant hole. It'd sink down. <laughs> so it wasn't you know, well, they just I won't say like today because we have a few springs oh. that are still a problem. <laughs> oh, do you really? <laughs> yes. <laughs> they but, should be marked. <laughs> uh, well, they fix them as they go. But um, the carpeting was, I heard, pretty bad. And the dressing rooms and all that. I mean, the whole place was really... So everyone was trying to overcome the shabbiness and just say this is a great place we can make it better and yes exactly and you were indomitable <laughs> yes <laughs> it all worked out in the end <laughs> so as the president of the arts council you served on the the first board of acts as a as a uh, not as a member but an ex officio mm -hmm. member and so you heard those early conversations. I bet a lot of them were about, we don't have any money. You know, I don't remember that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, sure, I'm sure that was a big problem. Though. Well, most nonprofit boards have that conversation, but I right. think it was a pretty bad situation. It was. It was. I, I'm amazed that it's come this far. It's wonderful, isn't it? It is. And, yes. and to think that the effort that was put in by you and so many other people. Yep. 
When you... Frank Legere, Mickey Legere. Yes. You know, I, I uh, heard that um, Mickey, I was wondering if she was going to come because she really, she and her husband did a lot. In the background, they never pushed themselves to be known or anything, but they just, they worked very hard for Proctors. I understand Frank is dead, mm -hmm. but Mickey is uh, physically um, uh, uh, unable to come. But I wanted to get her and her husband's name here because they really deserve to be mentioned. And she chaired some of the fundraisers. Yes, she did. She worked very hard, and so did he at it. So. Well, we've had him at some of the reunion efforts where we've tried to involve people who were involved in the early days. Yes, and I remember that. And I was coming to one, and I can't remember, but something happened uh -huh. uh, health-wise in the family, and I couldn't go. And I was horrified because I really would have liked to have seen a lot of the people that worked so hard for it. Do you, is there anything else you remember about Proctors that you'd like to tell us about? You know, I never, uh, the thing that bothered me a lot and still does is that I never really got to see all the back of Proctors, see the, the uh, uh, offices and up on the third floor. I know there's a third floor where there was an apartment I, and I knew that there was a, a tunnel underneath. Mm -hmm. I had never seen them and it always bothered me that I hadn't. I don't want to see them today by the way. Because <laughs> I, if you saw the office you'd be, the apartment you'd be quite underwhelmed. Why is it good or bad? <laughs> well it's not that much. <laughs> It's actually right now the um, office of the symphony. Oh, all right. Yeah. And they come in and do some work there. Okay. Um, but nobody's living there. No. Yeah. But the the rumor that I heard is that Mr. Proctor stayed there when he was in town. Yes, that's what I understood as well. We don't know if that's true. <laughs> and we, we never will. <laughs> <laughs> it's nice to think anyway. Okay. But did you ever go in the... Well, when we were doing the air conditioning project, I did go in the basement and look at the old air conditioner, which was a carrier, and it was water-based, and it had these nets, and they rolled around, picked up water. Oh, and wow. And then a fan went on it, and you, the air okay. came up through the floor. Mm -hmm. And it was very moist. And uh, probably today you wouldn't be allowed to use it because of Legionnaire's disease. Oh, yeah. But there are um, pathways underneath the, the theater that were to be used for putting electrical cords and okay. things like that, and also for air circulation. Right. Well, do you remember uh, when the um, there was a horrible fire in a in a nightclub? Do you remember that? Um, not in our not in our city, another city. But this is leading up to something that happened. Um, I was just a kid, about 12 or 13 years old, and the nightclub uh, burned, and a lot of the people didn't get out. For some reason or other, I was with a girlfriend and seeing a movie at Proctor's Theater, and uh, then like on Monday after this horrible thing happened, and I don't know what happened, but all of a sudden everybody in the theater. St oh, I know what it was. There was a smell in the theater. Mm -hmm. And it was a strange odor. It did not sm uh, smell like fire. I, I really couldn't identify it. But it was just like instant. The whole auditorium people stood up. And, st and what really amazed me was that the same thing that happened I at that uh, nightclub happened in the theater. Everybody ran to the aisles and just started pushing. It, and I was, sit I was paralyzed with fear, so I wasn't up. I was sitting in a in one of the seats and I was just paralyzed with fear and finally the lights went on and a man came out on the stage and he calmed the people down and he said that it wasn't a fire that we were all safe but I couldn't help but remember this is exactly just two days before the same thing and they didn't learn from that that you know there and, and by the way the exits I saw them were empty Mm -hmm. So they weren't using the exits, they were using the aisle and pushing, and it scared me. But uh, Well, you'll be glad to know that our ushers now have training in this, and so that's good. they practice evacuations of the theater, Okay. and they take well, good charge of it, and so we can evacuate the theater pretty fast. Oh, that's wonderful. Yeah. So set your mind at ease. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, Marilyn, you're living where now? Um, I live in um, 
what the heck is the name of? Teaneck. Oh, Teaneck, yes. And I live in a, in a like a, an old people's, <laughs> old people's nice place to live. <laughs> It's called the five star. As bad as she describes it. it's, it's called the five star residency, which is around all a, a lot of places. It's very nice. I, there's nothing I don't like about well, it. We're very glad that your daughter brought you here today, well, I am so too. we could reminisce a little bit, bit about Proctor's. Well, it was wonderful seeing you, Karen. I'm I'm glad we did have that. And my uh, cousin-in-law, or not cousin? What are we? Kissing cousins, and there's my kissing cousin right over there. Yes, we, our producer, and oh. her husband. Okay. We have to give them proper respect. Oh, okay. So we call him Captain. No, whatever. Well, thank you so much, Mary. Well, thank you for, for asking me. I I enjoyed it very much, Karen. And thank all of you for watching our history project. Marilyn Canole, former president of the. Schenectady Arts Council and one of the key leaders in the restoration of Proctor's Theatre.